Welcome to The Rule Dictator. My name is Corlith, your host, and this is how to play Descent with the Road to Legend expansion. In this segment, we explore the training options open to the heroes, as well as improvements the Overlord can purchase as he makes his attempt to rise to power. Let's start with the heroes. Remember that any points a hero spends comes from his personal experience point pool, and not from the party conquest total. Also recall that every time the party gains conquest points, each hero also gains a matching amount of experience points. In this way, the hero's individual experience point tally goes up and down, whereas the party conquest point total always grows. Every hero is entitled to enter the training circumstance whenever the party spends a week at a location. However, training at a city training ground or secret master location gives a hero the opportunity to purchase an upgrade to his personal abilities. As a general restriction, only a single upgrade may ever be purchased by a hero during a game week. Here are the things that can be upgraded. Traits, which are your power dice. Skills, which is your skill cards. Health pool, which increases the maximum number of wounds you can have. And fatigue pool, which increases the maximum number of fatigue you can have. As you know, you are entitled to roll up to a certain number of power dice as determined by the trait for the type of attack being made. The hero card indicates the default number of black power dice per trait. These tokens are used to indicate additional black power dice that have been bought from melee, ranged, and eldritch traits. These ones identify black dice that have been upgraded to silver, and these ones are used to show silver dice that have been further upgraded to gold. Here are the upgrade costs. Buying a black die costs 500 gold and 15 experience points. Take a black trait token of the appropriate type. Upgrading a black die to a silver one costs 750 gold and 20 experience points. Take a silver trait token of the appropriate type. And upgrading a silver die to gold costs 1000 gold and 25 experience points. Take a gold trait token of the appropriate type. Keep the following restrictions in mind when planning to buy a trade upgrade. Some cities only provide training for certain traits. Examine the top center of the city emblem to find out what is offered at a particular location. Secret Masters offer training for all traits. When buying an upgrade, remember that a trait may never have more than 5 power dice. The campaign level also places a limit on how many power dice may be upgraded. At the copper level, a hero may upgrade up to 3 of his black power dice to silver. No silver dice may be upgraded to gold. At the silver level, all black dice can be promoted to silver, and up to 3 silver dice can be further advanced to gold. At the gold level, all power dice are able to be upgraded to gold. At the beginning of the campaign, every hero got to select one skill. After spending a week at a training ground or secret master location, the hero can opt to purchase a new skill card. The experience point and gold cost to buy a new skill is listed on page 23 and looks like this. As you can see, the price increases depending on how many skill cards you already own, up to a maximum of 5 cards. Unlike traits, the campaign level has no bearing on how many skills you may learn. If a hero was able to collect enough experience and gold, he could learn up to the maximum number of skills in the copper level of the campaign. There are two very simple restrictions when it comes to buying new skills. The skill must be taught at the current city or secret master location. Page 22 of the Road to Legend manual lists every location and the skills that each one can teach, and the skill card must be available. As there is only one copy of each skill card, a hero cannot learn it if another hero already has it. When the heroes spend a week training with a secret master, they have another option open to them. Increase either their maximum health pool by 4, or their maximum fatigue pool by 2. The copper level upgrade costs 500 gold and 20 XP. The silver one costs 750 gold and 25 XP, and the gold level improvement costs 1000 gold and 30 XP. A hero can only get one pool upgrade per campaign level. In other words, a hero is only allowed to have one copper, one silver, and one gold level pool upgrade token. This means that when the time comes, the hero must choose between the health and fatigue pool upgrade, since he cannot have both for a particular campaign level. The gold level upgrade can only be purchased when the campaign has advanced into the gold level. The silver level upgrade can be bought when the campaign is in either the silver or gold level, whereas the copper upgrade can be obtained any time. And that covers the heroes. It's time to move on to the Overlord. I'm sure he's getting pretty impatient waiting for me to get to his stuff. 
The Overlord is allowed to purchase one upgrade per game week during the Overlord action phase, right after all of his lieutenants have performed their movement and siege actions. There are three types of upgrade he can get, Avatar cards, Treachery, and Monster Improvements. Just like the heroes, the Overlord gets an experience point for every conquest point he collects, and just like the heroes, his total XP goes up and down, where his conquest total always goes up. Let's start with Avatar cards. There are two kinds, Upgrades and Lieutenants. Upgrades are cards that provide either a passive benefit to the Overlord that persists for the rest of the campaign, or an ability that can be used at his discretion. Pay the listed XP price and put the card into play. Lieutenant cards represent minions that can be sent around the map to harry the heroes, destroy cities, and pick up plot quest items. After paying the XP cost, put the card into play and place the Lieutenant's token on the Overlord's keep. A Lieutenant persists until the end of the campaign, unless he gets killed by the heroes. The Overlord is only allowed to purchase Avatar cards that belong to any Avatar, or the Avatar being used. As you know, there are three types of treachery. Monster, Event, and Trap. Look at the Avatar card to see how much a treachery point costs per type, as well as the maximum number of treachery this Avatar is able to buy. After paying the XP cost, note on the campaign register the new treachery total. Monsters come in three categories as well, Humanoid, Beast, and Eldritch. The upgrade cost for every monster category, in XP, is listed on the Avatar sheet. When the campaign begins, all monsters use the copper level statistics in combat. All monsters have cards with copper, silver, gold, and diamond level statistics. Monster category upgrades must be paid for using the Overlord's experience points as they do not automatically advance with the campaign level. The only minions that automatically advance are lieutenants. Like all upgrades in the game, there are restrictions to buying monster upgrades. At the copper campaign level, the Overlord is only allowed to upgrade one of the monster categories to silver. At the silver campaign level, the Overlord can bring all of his monsters up to silver and may further improve one of them to gold. At the gold campaign level, all monsters may be upgraded to their gold level statistics. One of the three may be further advanced to the powerful diamond level. Once the XP cost has been paid, mark the new monster category level on the campaign record. Next time there is a battle, don't forget to use the upgraded monster statistics for that category of minion. And that's all there is to upgrades and training. The next and final segment of the series will be on storing the game between play sessions. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.